about 19 I uh, was still at college and uh, someone phoned me up who'd been recommended by my tutor or who'd recommended me um, as a promising young person he needed some help in his workshop in Croydon with a company called Feline Guitars and he just needed some help over the summer while a colleague was taking time off but we instantly got on really well and we had the same views and the same working standard and I learned fast so he decided to stop paying me and I did that part-time for a year and I've just gone full time. Yeah, so that's a place called Feeling Guitars in South Croydon. And we do we make electric guitars and we repair uh, acoustic sound electrics. I've been brought a guitar body by someone who wants the cavity spilling in and then they want it sprayed bright red. So I've got to start by filling all the gaps with the car body filler. In there. And then I've got to fill the pickup cavities with wood blocks. And then I'll start spraying grey primer in it. Basically this one I've completely covered with filler now, so that if the, the wood is lower than the body surface I can just sand it all flat and it covers the gaps around the edge. This one I need to sand it and then put some, some filler on that too. I filled in the holes where the, the old knob was and where the switch goes and a few more chips in the finish. And after I've done all that I'll just sand it flush and then finish sand it up to where it's ready to be sprayed and we can spray it basically. So first I've got to spray some grey primer on it to give it a consistent colour and then uh, we'll spray probably red or maybe pink paint on it. How do you feel about Ben making the guitars? Um, I'm really pleased. It's, um, it's something that involves working with wood, which he loves. He comes home and says, oh, you should smell this wood, and, and that's lovely. And um, it's being creative anyway. Uh, it's related to music, which is a fantastic thing. And um, you know he'll be able to do it forever. He loves it, and I'm very glad that he loves it. I was born basically a minute over the road and uh, my mum had come to London with her boyfriend, my dad, um, so they could run away to India basically and they wanted to go and live there forever, forever. and she had uh, three young girls at the time as well as uh, two kids who had moved out already. But when they got to London to get the flight my dad didn't have a passport and when they were trying to apply for the passport they realised it would take a while so they had to get a flat and uh, so they started squatting across the road actually because it was empty and, uh, and then my mum got pregnant and then I was born. And uh, so the council came along and said, we want you out of our flat because you're squatting. And she said, well, I've got four young kids and one of them's a baby. So they gave them a council flat over here and I've lived here ever since. And that was 20 years ago now. So uh, after that, really, we just sat around being hippies for a long time. None of us went to school. None of the family had jobs. And uh, we were just sat here getting really good education for my mum because she was there to actually look after us, you know. I learned to read at a very young age, learned to speak. I was a really fast developer. I always really used to love taking things apart and working out how they worked. And um, when I got to about seven, the authorities got concerned and started saying we should go to school. And mum, for a while, told them she was homeschooling us, which wasn't strictly true. But we were learning. I could do maths and I could read and write. And uh, then when I was about eight, we got sent to school. I hated it and I cried all day. Uh, halfway through the home education, um, one of the kids, uh, somebody was asking questions or doing this kind of thing actually, and, um, and we used to have all the kids in from the neighbourhood as well, so socialising, they got that in. But learning wise, my daughter said, uh, the thing is mum, you don't actually sit down and teach us anything. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I had to say, no, that was true. But what we did do was anything that they were interested in, I'd go and find books or toys or whatever to nurture it and um, play games and just f be positive every minute of every day. It was hard work. Eventually I went to school and became a normal kid, which wasn't very fun really. And uh, I hated that for about 10 years. And I got to GCSEs and I was ready to leave. Um, but I was smart and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed learning. I just didn't like being told what to do, being told to go there all day long. So um, 
I kind of had a few things I was interested in and I realised I didn't want to just go and do nothing. Uh, but I quickly realised sixth form wasn't the right answer. And by this time I'd started playing guitar when I was 15 and I used to tinker with my guitar, set them up, take them apart, things like that. And uh, a friend of mine recommended that I make a guitar. So I started looking for places to learn and there's really nowhere. Um, there's a course in uh, Cornwall that charges 12 grand a term. There's no way I would have afforded it. But I found a course in Merton, which is quite close to here. And I went there and did an evening course and realised I liked it. So I went full time and, uh, and finished the course. And actually, uh, when I finished, I made them run another year so I could stay there because I enjoyed it. First time I met Ben was uh, approximately three years ago. Uh, first day of the guitar making course at Merton College. Uh, we were doing basic tasks like getting to know the tools. So we got tools like planes, chisels, stuff like that. Uh, we were doing basic stuff which involves using those tools, getting to know how to use them, uh, just familiarising ourselves with them pretty much. These are all the guitars I've made or I'm still making. Um, this is the first one that I designed when I was a teenager. And I started it when I started college and then uh, it took a long time to finish and before that was finished I started this and I made this which is my first classical and then I worked on this one which is a classical too and I designed it myself and I finished it at the same time as that. Uh, since then I started another one which is a steel string that I designed everything myself. Uh, an electric guitar based on the Gibson SG that uh, is the next one to be finished. This uh, was my birthday present as a project all the wood was. Um, I've put it together, I've got it playing, but I still need to take it apart and sand it all up and polish it, and then it'll be finished. I always put this figure of eight on my guitars as well, because um, I liked it on the first guitar, it just worked, and I kind of did it on the second as well, and I've decided it's my, my thing now. So, uh, I've, I mean, this one's bronze powder, so it looks kind of gold, but I've done it with um, elephant ivory, and I've done it with uh, crushed pearl. This is a classical guitar um, I made at Merton College based on plans of a, a traditional design by a guy called Torres and uh, it's got a spruce top, uh, maple back and sides, uh, mahogany neck, uh, rosewood fretboard and bridge and it's got that really traditional classical tone, it's really sweet and lively with lots of definition as well. First you get your sides, which are the ribs here, and you have to get the long strips of it, which are matched, they're like, you can see it's from the same bit of wood and it's cut in half, so the grain matches, it's called book matching. And you have to thin them down so they're thin enough to bend, but not so thin they'll snap, and you heat them up on an iron, and you bend them to the right shape. And then you, the same with the back, you thin it down to the right thickness, and you stick the braces on it, you can probably just see through the sound hole, strips of wood to make it stronger. And then you build that and you glue it onto the sides. You draw the front in the same way, glue that on, decorate the sound hole. You make the neck, fit the neck into the body. And then you fit the fretboard and the frets, shape the neck, shape the head. Finish it, put the oil or whatever finish you're putting on, like varnish. And then you put the bridge on afterwards and string it up and set it up. The machine made guitars are usually made out of slightly cheaper materials. There's less quality control. People tend to just check that it's not broken in half or cracked or something, there's no knots in the wood and then move it along on the, on the you know, production line. So by the time it's finished it's only been checked so many times and all the processes have been done by machine so people didn't see if they did it wrong or, or messily. Whereas with the handmade guitar, every step of the way you're looking at it, you're checking it, you're making sure you're doing the job right. If something's got to be flat, it's flat, you know, you, you just inspect the guitar constantly. So you end up with a, a much more consistent product and also generally the materials are better. I don't make guitars anymore. I studied it for two years. Uh, during the second year I kind of realised it was a bit of a dead end for me. Um, to be a guitar maker you've got to be pretty good at what you do. You've got to have good woodwork skills, you've got to um, enjoy it a lot. Uh, it's not a job which pays a lot of money unfortunately, unless you're really lucky. Uh, Basically if you're going to be a guitar maker you have to do it because you like it, because you enjoy it, because it's what you want to do, uh, because you're good at it, because you, because you know you can make it succeed uh, and that just wasn't me I'm afraid so uh, Ben obviously uh, took things in a different direction he went and worked at Feline Guitars which uh, was good so um, it depends on the person if, you, if, it, if it's right for you then yeah it's good but if it's not then
got to move on, I think, which is what I did. We went to a couple of places and they all said, oh, there's no money in it and then you'll have to go to Australia. But to be honest, even today I've heard him saying, no, uh, he'll never make lots of money out of it. But I can see that money is made and it depends, therefore, on how you spend your money. He worked for a while in Sainsbury's. He did a perfectly normal job in a perfectly normal supermarket and absolutely loved it. And um, that actually gave him a social life. In that he talked to people and... You know, he was, if you like, in contact with the real world, the world that wasn't involved in music. And it would be nice if he could do five days, or say not seven days altogether, but say four days doing guitar making, and then a day or a day and a half doing something simple like working in a supermarket. But really, it's, it's something that you, know, you have a passion for, making stuff with wood, and therefore making guitars. And I think you should follow your passion in life. I can keep doing it for as long as I want. There's always going to be more work to do. It might not be incredibly well paid, but I can always keep doing it. I enjoy it. I'm okay living here now. I get what I need from my house. And I've got a lot of good transport. I've got my friends around here. But really, I'm going to live somewhere slightly bigger and slightly nicer, especially when I have my own family. In 10 years or before then, I want kids, really. So I need to be earning enough to look after my kids and keep them happy. The job I'm doing right now is not paid very well. I'm looking after myself. I could probably support one other person. You know, I mean, obviously two parents, they both do a reasonable amount of work, but it wouldn't exactly comfortably feed a large family in a nice house with a nice lifestyle at this stage, but I'm sure I could find other jobs in the industry. I think if I do stay in guitar making, I'll probably try and get a job as like an executive of a larger company, you know, like Fender Europe or something, see if I can be their head guitar maker or their factory manager or something. I just got an email from my old uh, course supervisor at Martin College and he basically said that uh, Manson Guitars in Somerset are looking for a new full-time guitar tech. And firstly, they're one of the top names in the country. Uh, secondly, I think I'll get better pay than where I am now. And thirdly, I can probably, I'm with a good chance of getting the job because I'm good at what I do. I spent a year and a half at one of the other best repair places in the country, Feline Guitars. And if I wanted to apply, I probably would be in with a good chance. But it's a question of, uh, am I okay leaving my current job? Can I afford to move to Somerset? Do I want to leave London and move to Somerset? I'd be living on my own in a new town. So I might even end up with less money than I have now because of rent and food and stuff. So it's a big deal, you know, and it's a big step for me. But I think if I wanted to do it, I'd be with a good chance of landing the job because I'm hardworking and I'm, I've got very good skills. So I've got to think hard about it first, really. But I should at least phone up and look into it because it could be the next step in my long-term career you know, that takes my work to a high level. You could call it the opportunity of a lifetime. Mm -hmm.